I read some books in July. Let's talk about them. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Clara and I make bookish videos on the YouTube.com. I read a lot more than I thought I would in July because I really thought that July was just gonna be way too busy for me to even do anything. Between not feeling well, going camping, July activities, starting therapy, like it was just a very, very busy month. I'm impressed with myself with how much I read. That said, please do not compare yourself to how much I read. I may read more than you, I may read less than you. Who cares? We're reading, we're having fun. I read a total of 11 books, although I will say that I did make it through half of another book and then half of another book I will briefly talk about. <laughs> I didn't finish them, but together they make a whole book, so did I read 12 books? Who knows? But that said, I had only five and four star reads this month and I'm so excited about that. I feel like I've been doing a really good job of reading books that I know I'm going to love or really really like. I love that because I have a real issue with worrying that I'm wasting my time on like anything and everything so to have books that I end up loving or incredibly incredibly liking is just such a win in my brain that I can't help but celebrate myself a little bit, pat myself on the back, good job champ! Yeah. Without further ado, let's get into what I read because I'm really excited to talk about all of these with you. First on my list, I have a book that I have not heard anybody talk about, at least on booktube, which I just find so surprising considering the outpouring of love for The Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. I thought that book was okay. I didn't jive with the writing style. I'm not trying to like compare these two books, but I'm pretty sure they came out around the same time. I'm heartbroken. More people aren't jumping to read this book because it it was everything. It was so good. And that was Dragonfall by L.R. Lamb. This is an adult fantasy. It was it was so good. I gave this five stars. I thought the world was so cool. I thought the magic was really interesting. There was a heist in it. It has a non-binary main character. It has dragons. It talks about gender. It's a romanticy. It deserves so much love and all the love that Fourth Wing is getting. Can I funnel that to this? It had enemies to lovers. Are you kidding me? This follows Arcady, who is a thief who is living on the streets of Vatra. They live in this old abandoned lock and key shop, appropriately called lock and key, which I just thought was great because there's a place in this world called lock, but it's spelled like L-O-C-H. It was funny, okay? I appreciate the pun. They decide that they're going to steal an artifact from the bones, like the crypt of this person called the plague bringer. And this artifact is going to give Arcady the chance at a new life. It holds the magic that will allow them to live this new life and seek revenge for what this society has done to their family. But when they unleash this magic from the artifact, the spell connects them to Everin, who is the last male dragon who lives on the other side of what's called the veil, which basically separates the human world from the dragons. The dragons currently hate the humans because they were somehow responsible for creating the veil and pushing the dragons out of what was their world to begin with. There is a very strong war brewing, but there was also a prophecy that said that everyone would be the one to save the dragons. There's a bond that neither of them know how it got there or how to break it. In order to not only break it, but regain his magic and save his world, he's going to have to get Arcady to trust him. But the two hate each other, so it has such a good dynamic. It has queer representation. It talks about gender and sexuality, which is just really cool in a fantasy setting. I don't know. I don't know why it doesn't have higher ratings. My only thought is that it is interesting in the sense of its POV. It has multiple POVs. Arcady's POV is first person. Everyone's POV is second person, like they're talking to Arcady. There's other chapters from different characters that are in third person. It may not be everybody's cup of tea, but I thought that was such a cool premise. It was really unique. Top tier. Fantastic. The tension between these two. Oh my god. Please. This has it all. I need to shut up about it or else I'm gonna go on forever. So, moving on. Please read Dragonfall. After that, unsurprisingly, I was still in the mood for dragons. And I remember that I had this on my shelf and I picked it up because it was short and it was quick and it was sweet. So I picked up The Ice Dragon by George R.R. R. Martin. This has been on my shelf for a while. I actually found this thrifting. It was something that I had been wanting to buy for a while, but I couldn't justify buying this full price because it's so short. Bada bing bada boom. Thank you, thrifting gods. I gave this four stars. It wasn't my absolute favorite, but it was still very reminiscent of George's storytelling style, which I am 
enjoyed. It also has really sweet illustrations in it. This is, I believe, technically a children's story. It's about this young girl named Adara who is a winter child. She's very cold. She's very unemotional to her family. She's kind of a little bit of an outcast. She's only four years old when she meets this ice dragon who has been flying over her village every winter that the entire village is afraid of, but she's not because she likes the cold. And then she's like, yeah, I'm gonna ride this dragon. So she does. And then every winter after that, she rides this ice dragon around and it's just the best time of her life. But there is a war brewing. One day when she's seven years old, there are fire breathing dragons that come and breathe fire on her town. <laughs> and so she seeks out the ice dragon to help. Basically, I don't wanna give too much away because it is a very short story. And if I say any more, it'll give it away. But this was a really haunting story. I had a really sad ending, I felt. It really felt like a story about how it's okay to handle things on your own, but it's also okay to open up to people and let them help you. Yeah, I don't know. It was good. It wasn't my absolute favorite, like I said, but I still give it four stars because I really think the illustrations added to it. And it was just a really sweet, quick dragon story. After that, I picked up another quick read and this was so much fun. Oh my God. The first volume of Bug Boys by Laura Knetzer. I want to say middle grade. I don't really know, but it's a cute little graphic novel about these bug boys. <laughs> They're best friends. They're Stag Bee and Rhino Bee and they're just buddies going on adventures and it felt very reminiscent of I want to say like Adventure Time but for like a younger audience even than Adventure Time is maybe. It was low stakes just fun adventures doing random things and their friendship together. This is another one that because it's a graphic novel has so many cute illustrations. Like are you kidding me? The illustrations were really half the fun of reading this and Laura Netzer is definitely one of my new favorite artists. It was just so much fun to read. It was so quick and easy but also really sweet and and I can't recommend this enough if you're looking for a cute easygoing low-key read that will make you feel all the feelings but also feel like a child again like I just felt like a little kid and everything just felt so simple and so easy and so nice like it, it just it really did something for me and I can't recommend this enough I'm so excited I think there's at least two other uh just not episodes, what's the word? There's two others at least in this series <laughs> and I'm really really excited to pick them up. They're definitely a new comfort read for me and definitely one that I will pick up time and time again whenever I need a little like a warm hug. After that I don't have it with me because my fiance is actually reading it and that is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This was my first Riley Sager and I have been wanting to pick something up by him for a long time now. I just didn't know where to start and this I heard about I wish I could remember who I heard it from but they described it as very reminiscent of Haunting of Hill House and if you don't know I love Haunting of Hill House the book the show both are just I love them they're perfection so when I heard that this was described I was like hell yes this is the one and then get this get this guys I went to the bookstore and I was just reading the back guess where it's set it's set in Vermont I live that's where I live <laughs> Okay. Girlies, what? <laughs> Everything was just working in my favor. I got this right before I went camping, so I brought it camping and I read it while I was camping and it was made even better, like the spookiness. Okay, if you don't know what this is about, this is about a girl who, oh my God, why am I blanking on her name? Whatever. <laughs> this is about a girl who when she was younger she lived in a haunted house and they fled one night in the middle of the night because something happened and it scared the crap out of them all. Then her father wrote a book about it but then years later she, her father dies and leaves the house to her and she didn't even know that her father still owned the house. She thought he sold it you know after the, the nightmare. <laughs> her and her friend flip houses so she decides to go to the house and get it ready to sell. Between them fleeing in the middle of the night, her father writing a book and the house flipping that in itself is just very Hill House reminiscent and I was like oh this is gonna be good and 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 Riley Sager kept mentioning different towns that I go to every day he kept like name dropping them and it just kept making me laugh that said the reading experience was even more fun for me because I knew where this was set I could feel the surroundings besides that though she goes back to the house and creepy things start happening all over again she doesn't remember much from her time living at this house the first time because she was so young and and she like blocked it out. So she doesn't actually believe the house is haunted, but then things start happening and she's becoming more and more questioning of whether her father was actually telling the truth or not. So it's really fast paced, it's fun, it's creepy. Like I was actually 
getting scared a little bit. It, it kept me guessing till the very, very end, which I really, really liked. I liked how it didn't, it wasn't just like one plot twist. It felt like a whole series of plot twists. So you never knew what the truth was and you're just going along for this ride and it was so much fun. There, <laughs> there was one line that made me really, really laugh just for Moner things. There was a line that was describing some character and it was like, he was wearing the Vermont state uniform, a flannel and corduroy pants, except it was the middle of like July and I'm like gr nobody's wearing that in the middle of July and the flannel thing is just like so I you know I was about to say overdone and yet <laughs> I can't even talk now I'm a hypocrite I'm wearing a flannel I was about to say the flannel Vermonter thing is so overdone, but I'm literally wearing a flannel while writing, read it, read, telling you this, so I can't, like, I, this was not, okay. <laughs> I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I think I, I think I, I don't know. Did I round it to a 4 or 5? We'll definitely be picking up another Riley Sager book at some point because I just had so much fun reading it. I don't usually go for quick paced thrillers, but it reminded me why when I do read them, I love them. If you have any Riley Sager recommendations to read, please leave them below. Let me know your favorite because I would, I, I'm just, I want to go pick up another one. <laughs> After Home Before Dark, I picked up a manga because I felt like I needed something something a little bit lighter in between. My novels, you know, a little snack, a little treat. So I picked up Our Dreams Before Dusk. Nope, Our Dreams at Dusk. They happen at dusk, wow. This was just a really sweet little tale. It's a coming of age about this boy who's coming to terms with his sexuality. He realizes he's gay. He finds community at this drop-in spot. He goes there, he starts to make friends with them. There's this mysterious woman who's like, you can tell me things, but I'm not going to listen. He's able to just voice how he's feeling. He also makes friends with this woman who is a lesbian and married to this other woman. He finds it really admirable, he wants to hear more about how she got over the fear of being out. It's just about really coming to terms with sexuality and having that sense of community. This is the first volume, so I'm honestly interested in picking up the next one. And then, that's right, you guessed it, I picked up my third dragon book of the month, and that was A Natural History for Dragons by Marie Brennan. I actually started this at the beginning of the month, but I didn't want to take this one camping because it's such a pretty cover and I didn't want it to get damaged, so I put it down. I read Home Before Dark. When I got home, I picked this back up. These are fake memoirs of Lady Trent, who is a dragon naturalist, and this is the start of her adventure, an adventure to document the anatomy and behaviors of dragons. I describe this as if Jane Austen wrote about a woman who wanted to be a dragon naturalist. It's that time era, very much against the social norm for a woman to be having a job and doing these things. It's frowned upon, it's talked about, it's gossiped about, and she's overcoming these boundaries and expectations of society to pursue her dream. This book features her drawings as well. She finally convinces her husband to let her go on a adventure with her and this team. Be the one who like goes and sketches and keeps their files in order. So throughout the book we get all these drawings and sketches of different dragons that she comes across which is just so cool and adds so much to the story. Like we get to see what she's seeing and what she's learning and it's just this wonderful cozy fantasy. It definitely has some stakes to it but it's definitely an easygoing-ish fantasy that's more about the adventure and learning about dragons and the science of dragons. Our main character, Isabella, is just so- she's so witty and she's so strong and funny. Her banter with her and her husband made me laugh multiple times. I really loved every second of it. This is the first in a series of Lady Trent's memoirs. It's so much fun. It's a new favorite and I'm really excited to pick up the rest of the series. I gave this five stars. I forgot to say, but I gave Our Dreams at Dusk four stars and apparently this was my month of like manga and <laughs> graphic novels because after that I picked up another manga. This is one that's been on my shelf for a little bit now. I wanted to wait a while because I had watched the show. The show is my favorite anime and I wanted to wait a little while in between before I read this because it was still so fresh in my head. I finally picked up the first volume of Fate Zero. This is a fantasy about generational holy grail wars. There's a holy grail war that these families fight in every however many years. They each get a hero. Like they're the master of this hero. Essentially 70s 
seven mages summon heroes from history to battle each other to the death and only one mage and hero will be able to win the holy grail and when they win the holy grail they'll have a wish granted it's like a fight against all these other mages and heroes to make sure that the grail doesn't get in the wrong hands or otherwise the world could be destroyed and it's just so much fun the characters are so incredible Saber is one of my favorites but also uh rider <laughs> and then I read a kind of weird, but I really enjoyed it. Like, I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. And that's A Breath of Life by Clarice Lispector. The dialogue between an author and their character, and they bring their character to life. And there's themes of life and death, and there's these beautiful, relatable quotes in here. Clarice Lispector didn't live to see this published, so the fragments of this were gathered by her friend and then published later on. I think that's really neat. <laughs> I actually annotated this one because there was just so much in it that that resonated with me. If you're looking for a book with plot, this is not the book for you. It, this is zero plot, straight vibes. It gets a little weird. It gets a little bizarre. Like you're like, what are you even talking about? But I think that it has some really, really powerful quotes in here that just really stuck with me. I wanna read the first paragraph to you to convince you, <laughs> essentially. This is not a lament. It's the cry of a bird of prey, an iridescent and restless bird, the kiss upon the dead face. I write as if to save somebody's life, probably my own. Life Life is a kind of madness that death makes. Long live the dead because we live in them. Girly. <laughs> this was just a really quick to get through. I read this in one day. Short read that packs a punch. I give this four stars. I docked a star because it did get a little confusing. This requires some big brain energy and I felt like I really had such a big brain reading this. But then when I got to a certain point, I was like, oh, maybe I'm stupid after all. <laughs> it was good. We had a great time. And it's been a little bit since I've annotated anything. So it was nice to get back into that as well. After that, I have been buddy reading this series with Vanessa from the Fairy Wilds. I will link her down below. She's wonderful. She was actually the first friend I made on booktube years and years ago and so when she wanted to do this buddy read with me I was so excited. I, I don't think I've ever done like a proper buddy read. I could be. My memory is really bad so if I have I, I don't remember but she wanted to buddy read this series with me because neither of us have read this and we're just like how have we never read this? I had the first three books and then she reserved the first three. I think from the library we finished Percy Jackson and the Olympians the lightning thief this is the first time I've ever read Percy Jackson I loved this. We both agree that we wish that we had read this sooner. This was just so much fun. It really holds up. I was kind of worried that it was just gonna feel like a basic adventure story that has just been overdone, but this felt so fresh and so witty. There's so many times this made me laugh out loud. It was fast-paced. The characters were so lovable. I loved Percy. I loved Grover. I loved Annabeth. And I'm so glad that I got to buddy read this with Vanessa because I think that really added to this experience as well. I do think I saw the movie when it came out years and years ago, but I know that people hate the movie. I don't remember anything from it, but I was looking up the, the cast. Tell me why the Percy Jackson movie cast was so loaded with just the most random high paid actors. Like there was Uma Thurman, Pierce Brosnan, Sean Bean. Tell me why Kevin McKidd. I, I love Grey's Anatomy. Tell me why Kevin McKidd is Poseidon. And then I was like, Looking up because I got into this like wormhole of looking up the IMDb. I didn't realize they made a second movie. In that movie, Stanley Tucci, Nathan Fillion, Yvette Nicole Brown, like what is going on? The cast in these movies is just like buck wild and it makes me want to rewatch it. I know it's probably terrible. Anyways, this was so much fun. I'm so glad I read it. I wish I'd read it sooner. I'm really excited to continue on with the series. And that's one of the books that I'm in the middle of that I mentioned in the beginning. I'm currently, we're, we're on Sea of Monsters and I actually just got a text from Vanessa saying she finished it. I have not finished it. I am on chapter eight. <laughs> so I have a bit of reading to do after I film this, but I am just really excited to continue on. I'm really loving this so far. I don't know why I told Vanessa this, but I was like, it's giving me Halloween Town vibes. <laughs> Maybe it was the Grey Sisters in the taxi, it just reminded me of Benny. But again, this has made me laugh out loud so many times and I'm just, I'm having, I'm, okay. I'm having so much fun. 
And last but not least, I technically read this after I finished the first Percy Jackson. I picked up another manga, shocking. I picked up The Liminal Zone by Junji Ito and I didn't expect to love this one as much as I did. This is one of his shorter collections. I gave this five stars. The first one, Weeping Woman Way, I gave five stars. The second one, Madonna, I gave 4.5 just because it made me a little uncomfortable with the age thing. The Spirit Flow, I gave 4.5 stars. And then Slumber, I gave five stars. This one was just a, such a solid collection. And as always, I love Jendi Ito's artwork. It's just so good. It was such a good time. This is just a collection of some of his spooky stories. And I actually read the introduction. Apparently he wrote these during COVID lockdown. He did a good job. I'm proud of him. That was everything I read in the month of July. Well, and I'm in the middle of January, but that is for a later date that I will talk to you about that. I just had such an amazing reading month that I really hope that next month I can keep this ball rolling and just like a keep up with the kick I'm on because I don't know what's in the air, but wowee, I had such like straight fives, straight fours. Are you kidding me? I did so good this month. <laughs> I hope that your reading month was just as good as mine. Truly and deeply I do. Wherever you are, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Make sure to treat yourself and others with kindness and love always. And I will see you next time for another video. Okay, bye. <laughs> I got a little messed up, sorry. Ugh. Hell yeah. <laughs>